Praise God. It took me a little while to get back to you. I had uh, a few things to do. I, you know, I just... Uh, what I left off on the last tape was uh, the periods of time that fit within what I believe is a 10-day feast period. Now, it's that 10-day feast period from the Feast of Trumpets and to the Feast of Tabernacles <coughs> to me is the 5th, 6th, and 7th lighting of the candles. Okay? Or could be trumpets. Could be whatever. 5th, 6th, 7th. Uh, just trying to share with you what's been given to me and what I have come to understand to the degree I've come to understand it. So, like I said, it's wide open uh, for any of those who are uh, into the kingdom message, understand some of the basics of the types and the, and the shadows, uh, have maybe been able to bring this. Like I said, I was share it. I was listening to a brother down there about the <laughs> his understanding of kingdom authority and uh, he had a pretty good uh, he shared very clearly a lot of different issues uh, like I said a lot better than I could ever have done uh, so <coughs> excuse me um, there are others alright come on uh, a lot of spiritual brothers here who are holding back I think okay from sharing what they've come to understand. Why, I don't know. But uh, you would certainly think that there'd be a lot more of them out there right now uh, sharing uh, through the same means that we're able to. Uh, maybe I'm just not seeing them all. Maybe there's a lot more of them I'm just not finding. But uh, at any point, in any way, uh, I want to get back to the temple thing, the ten days. That uh, that was something that I've been trying to think about and come to an understanding about for quite a while. Because, you know, uh, I, I hate being like a scribe trying to make sure everything fits in a perfect period of time. But, when it comes to the Word of God, I, we may not have been able to maintain perfect records okay but God does everything in a perfect order so uh, if those ten days from the Feast of Trumpets to the Feast of Tabernacles are literally ten years which I believe they are then there are certain things that need to take place number one uh, prior to the tribulation uh, at least a three year period and I say it's coming three and a half. So, uh, because of the overlapping, and this is where I'm coming into this at, because of the overlapping in Amos 9.13, for those of you who have read how that happens, no more, the wheat isn't completely gathered together before the plowing starts. You see that overlappingness of it? Well, because of that, I came to believe that, okay, these, these things, even though I... Uh, it's three and a half years, but if you consider an overlapping of perhaps six months, just like in Amos, it seems like one's not finished before the other one begins, and so on and so forth. See what I'm saying? So, within those parameters, all right, in a ten year period of time, you could have three three year periods. Three, three and a half. But they'd be overlapping each other. You understand what I'm saying? So that really, uh, there are three three-year periods, even though they're three and a half years in length, one is beginning and ending over the overlapping period of time that the other one is starting. See what I'm saying? So in that sense, that quick succession could be, and very well maybe. The three years that I'm referring to 
in regards to the gathering of the wheat and the fulfilling of his, the finishing of his week, the Messiah's week, which must be finished before Daniel's week starts place. Now, <clears throat> I want to tell you that at the same time, the two branches could be joining together. Now, I don't know that anybody has any real understanding yet, just as when to win the uh, 144,000 footmen of natural Israel come forth. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear something about that in regards to that, and I'll start to look for it myself. It, whether or not there's uh, anything in the book of Revelations that really pinpoints that time. Because here's what I'm coming into, and b by the grace of God, okay, because I'm looking out, trying to look out for my brothers, all right? You've got to understand the apostles were all Jewish brethren, all right? There's, there's nothing more than they want than to have their ancestry uh, come into this, okay? Trust me. Uh, and he is a true Jew by the circumcision of his heart, brother. All right, so I consider myself a spiritual Jew, but a Jew, okay? And uh, anyway, nonetheless. Uh, so uh, you got to know. So when I say that, you know, you know uh, I really, I'm hoping that... Uh, this thing works out so that we're all taken up, transformed from mortal to immortal, removed from any uh, condemnation or judgment, okay, that uh, might have. But, uh, well, not might, that is getting ready to take place by the Father. Now, so that timing, if I'm, if I'm right, because it's my belief that it's, these sons who come forth in the spiritual body of Christ, okay, these footmen or workmen of the eleventh hour are the ones, not they, they, they don't do it, but the Father does it through us. Through these workmen the, uh, and the anointed word of God that's upon them, what they bring forth is so complete and perfect in line with the old and the new and the book of Revelations that no man can dispute what's being said, not even our Jewish brethren. You see what I'm getting at here? If they can, if they, through the work of this ministry, are convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt of the truth, of the unveilings, of the mystery of God through the body of Christ, all right, you better believe they'll be repenting faster than you can shake a stick at and that that would be exactly what it is that causes them to see him whom they have pierced. So it's my belief that the building of the temple in the natural whether it happens or not, it probably will. But more importantly, I see the coming forth of the 144,000 natural Jewish brethren as the evangelical footmen who come forth at the last hour. So here I'm seeing, all right? First three years, three and a half years overlapping, coming into tribulation because... The house of Israel signs its contract, I believe, uh, signs its peace treaty within the next three years, right at the time of the beginning, perhaps, of the earthquake in the s southern Arizona, which is like the beginning of the tribulation period. Because the church will have already brought forth its man-child company, and then the devil is seen uh, spewing out uh, water to sweep her away, but you, know, you notice the child isn't with her. It's, so it's the church. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that one a little bit. But anyway, uh, that's the three years. Tribulation begins. But as a result of the evangelical movement of uh, these footmen, this uh, uh, workmen of the 11th hour, okay, Israel's ministry begins. And so all of this happens within a seven-day period. Uh, 
be, the reason I say that's important, okay, is that somewhere along the line, now we've got to find out, you know, my brother are not going to be left to the judgments of God. If we're uh, saved out of the tribulation, they are saved out of the judgments of God. It's equal heirs in the kingdom of heaven. It's God's justice and His mercy. He would not give to one, do for one that He would not do for the other. So, now, what happens to the other three years? Well, we know that that first set of three years, okay, is devoted to building the temple and cut first the peace tree, then the building of the temple in, in Israel. Then halfway through that week, which they say is Daniel's 70th week, all right, the treaty is broken. Something happens. All right. And then uh, we're at the middle of the week. Prophetically speaking, their witnesses are around there somewhere. So that's what I'm trying to say. There's, there are things in there that I believe all happen within a nine-year, ten-year period. But we still have the judgments of God, which I don't know how long they last or when they begin. But you see a little bit of a picture here, of a time period picture, and how the ten days from the day of... Uh, Feast of, or Feast of Trumpets until the seven days is fulfilled, Daniel's week, our three days, their seven days, that's ten days. Okay? It's ten days. And then we're into the Feast of Tabernacles, which I believe is the transforming from mortal to immortal. What takes place with the children, uh, the wheat, and all of them, like I said, I, uh, I know we're, they're gathered into the barn, and I know the barn are the sons and daughters of God, the stones. But uh, when it comes to the gifts and the rewards, that's between the father and, and his children. Um, I can only say that uh, he has already told us okay, that there are varying rewards. So, uh, but none. <laughs> None of the rewards are God or chintzy, okay? <laughs> so if you're if you're disappointed that you didn't get the big one, maybe it's got something more to do with what you were willing to lay down and you didn't, you know? Maybe it's got more to do with the leading of the Spirit of God and our submission and obedience to that. Maybe everybody's given the same opportunity, but not everybody has chosen as a result of the decisions they've made in regards to walking with God. Uh, that may have something to do with it. And uh, So it's not a righteousness of our own, it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ, but Paul told us that we're all to run a race to win it. And we're given the high mark, uh, high, mark of the high calling to reach God in Christ, which not all of us may reach that point before the end comes. So uh, I don't see anything unfair about rewarding those who have made the extra effort to reach that mark. Okay? And those of you who have true justice in, in, uh, in your hearts understand that. Okay? So the thing is, is that the Father loves and cares for all his children. Okay? And that's the bottom line on that. So praise God. Uh, I like chit-chatting a little bit, trying to keep you encouraged about what's taking place. I'm, I'm in prayer. Uh, Feast of Trumpets. You ought to see, uh, start seeing some more activity of what I've been sharing with you <laughs> regarding this message of the Kingdom of Heaven because uh, it's what gets spread throughout the earth uh, before the end comes. So, amen, and uh, have a good evening. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks to the Father. Yeah, uh, for all of you. Amen.